located 400 kilometers southeast of Addis Ababa, the Bale Mountain National Park is home to a unique and vast array of biodiversity. It is a spectacular landscape, home to the highest peak in the southern Ethiopian highlands and the rare Ethiopian wolf, of which only around 500 are thought to be remaining. Here, in these historical and beautiful highlands, 25 people from Africa and beyond have come together for a unique workshop and celebration. The participants come from a diverse array of backgrounds ranging from local community members and custodians of sacred natural sites to representatives from national and international non-governmental organizations. This year, celebrating their 10th anniversary, Melka Ethiopia are hosting a commemorative day of activities which reflect their work to revive and preserve Ethiopia's ancient traditions and cultures. The celebration is a colorful and vibrant reflection of Ethiopia's biocultural diversity. With dance, drama, and song, an audience of over 3,000 people enjoy the performances and observe the way in which local schools and communities have engaged in Melka's work. Board members, government administration bodies, representatives of the countries, local communities, and school partners all soak up the atmosphere. Melka Ethiopia, is a real one, but I'm but I'm but I'm Italy, you know. Makna to Mandania Balun Melka and Sakasi, the Jemmer Bet, the Valley, Makaver Michalachino. Established in 2004, Melka's first conservation and preservation project began here in Bali. Melka chose Bali because of its rich biodiversity and cultural authenticity. This area is known for the variety of its representative ecosystems, starting from the grasslands up through the alpine climate cloud forest. Today, more than 5,000 students have taken part in a program known as SEGNI. The program was established by Melka to reconnect students to their cultures, with nature and with themselves. In different schools across the country, these students are now actively engaged in environmental and cultural protection activities, revaluing an identity which was otherwise at risk of being lost with every new generation. Here, representatives from different schools present cultural shows featuring traditional songs and dance, horse riding, poems, and dramas. To raise awareness of its importance and to engage the young generation, elders also perform traditional conflict resolution practices, which used to be crucial in ancient self-governing systems. Not only have Melka reinvigorated a sense of pride in the culture amongst the younger generations, they have also engaged women and elders, revaluing their roles in traditional community structures. They have supported the establishment of the Elders Association of Bali, where members of the whole community, including elders, custodians, and government officials, come together to discuss how to demarcate and protect their territory from threats of development. To date, they have legally demarcated no less than 22 sacred natural sites as no-go areas. This is an example of sacred natural sites protection and one of the great interests to their African and international visitors. To see this work in action, the group, including members from Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, Ghana, and the UK, joined Melka to visit a local sacred natural site, conserved by the community in the Bale Denshu area. 
Here, Sacred Natural Sites custodians from Bali, Kenya, and Zimbabwe share their experiences. Amma mora bingala ni haga u mukin kunile nu kabajame botan abondi ke na iti sena da parite le nu kabajame kabajaran kasarka kana daga hugala tarabiti galpana. Ah, i bota. Kita mi kaya kana mana maire. Iri bantu ara ara ringi da gua deni ya 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 antora eke gua eke eke umba ku kuape kuru kwenyange ko inveguru kana antu baba tole tende ni yen ya wantu oku. Sacred sites are critical places for these communities. They are places where ritual and ceremonies are practiced to protect the community, welcome new life, and carry out rites of passage. Often, they are also a place used to resolve conflicts that may arise within the community. Melka's work to protect sacred natural sites is rooted in an understanding of customary law and practice. Customary law is that which governs traditional culture, and it is deeply connected to and respectful of the role of the natural world. The group gathered here in Ethiopia advocate laws which are guided by the laws of the natural world, the earth that are critical in preserving biocultural diversity. This is a body of practice known as Earth Jurisprudence. There's two sources of inspiration for Earth Jurisprudence. The one is obviously the Earth herself, because that's where the laws come from. But the second is indigenous traditions, because indigenous traditions base their governance systems on understanding and complying with the laws of the territory in which they live. We are saying, basically, law should derive from nature. And if law should derive from nature, customary governance systems are basically the laws. It's, it's where it should come from. These are the people who their day-to-day -day lives reflect how to live with nature and how to care for nature. By reviving and valuing local customary law and its profound respect for the earth, communities are empowered to build their capacity to protect their water, food, and sacred natural sites from the threat of modern development, just as Melka has succeeded in doing in Bali through the demarcation of sacred natural sites. It doesn't matter how good your case is, unless the values are rested upon real communities that are believing and living those values, that will not, the case cannot be successful. So the work on the ground with communities is an absolutely essential component of success in transforming the values of Africa. Through those practices, the right to culture manifests in such a way that humans are no longer dominating the earth, but are working intrinsically with the nature around them. At another protected sacred site, which has been legally demarcated as a part of this program, the guests are invited to attend a ceremony to bless the coming harvest season. This traditional ceremony is based on the understanding and complying with laws of the territories in which they live. Oh, I believe that we need to really do something. Uh, in terms of building confidence to revive and to maintain uh, of the knowledge system that is not yet extinct. Having experienced the sacred site celebrations at La Beno today, it was very hard not to be totally inspired by witnessing the power and the exuberance of people who are celebrating their connection with their environment 
and are determined to practice those rituals and practice earth jurisprudence. Through the protection of the cultural and natural diversity, there will come a new paradigm shift through which today's civilization can retain the roots of its history and move forward in an ecologically and economically sound form. This movement is one that is in complete harmony with the earth and its inhabitants.